So I think I've officially determined my creative process. I just suddenly get this idea and I'm like, this has to be a video. It just has to. And that is how this video came about to be. When I realized just how much money and time I've spent simply being on Instagram. And to bring you proof, I am going to go through all of my bank statements from the past month. So today is April 18th. I'll be going back to March 18th to see just how much of the money that I've spent over the past month has been influenced by my time on Instagram. All right, let's scroll back. March 18th. So a lot of these statements right now are for food, which is good. Aha, 58,501, which is like equivalent to US $60 ish. It's not a huge amount, but it's also not a small amount to be spending in one spree. So this was actually during my Dubai trip. I was shopping in Korea while I was in Dubai at this website that I've actually been following on Instagram. If I'm following a brand on Instagram, that means I'm actually intending to possibly buy it. This brand called Portena or Port I don't know what the actual word means, but it's one of those Korean wholesale websites that I talked about, except they're really, really good at branding and marketing in a way that their clothes look expensive, but they're actually not. And the reason I shopped from them is because I, even though I've seen some of these styles and other websites, they're actually probably the most inexpensive version I can find. My mic was not on properly, but now it is. I know what I bought from this site, three different items. And considering it was three items, the total is not that bad, but of course we don't want just think about the total amount. We want to think about how often this actually happens. We don't want to let cheap prices get us sucked into the habit of shopping fast fashion on a regular basis. Let's see. And then there was something else for 48,691 won. I think I know what this is. Okay, so this was a groceries. So I guess that doesn't really count. Another purchase from Coupang for almost 23,000 won. This was skincare. Okay, I did need skincare, so I guess I wasn't really influenced by Instagram. Nothing about skincare ever pops up on my Instagram, probably because I don't look at it enough. Another purchase from Coupang, which is a rosé fire noodles. There's like a rosé or rosé pasta version of it, which is like this really popular sauce in Korea that's kind of like half tomato, half cream sauce. That I honestly don't remember why I bought it. I think it was actually Instagram. It was like one of those honey jam or convenience store foodie bucket list sort of one of those carousels. I always get sucked into food carousels. Okay, I bought a pair of shoes. I'm pretty sure I did see on Instagram, but the main reason I buy clothes now anyways is honestly because I'm like, oh, this would look really nice in a photo. Without Instagram, I probably wouldn't buy this many clothes. These shoes cost 38,000 won, including a shipping fee, but then I had to exchange the size, which was an extra 6,000 won. So a total of 44,000 won, give or take 40-ish dollars, which is like, that's a lot. So thankfully, a lot of the things I did spend money on this past month is food, which is an essential. Wow, I did pretty good this month. So let's go back one more month since this past month I've been a little bit better at the self-control resistance thing. And I've been like on the verge of buying a bunch of things that I don't need. So I know that I will want to and I might do it eventually. There is a hair ribbon from Chu. Oh, there are socks, Pantone socks to be specific. And these were about 20,001. I got gel nails from Ohora, which is a popular brand of DIY gel nails in Korea. I'm pretty sure I saw on Instagram. There is this set, which I've been wearing a lot on my Instagram, which is technically a result of the shopping app that I used to use, which I've now all deleted from my phone. So technically, technically you could say that Instagram made me spend money on this art exhibit that I really wanted to go to because I wouldn't have known about this photographer if it weren't for Instagram, but she does have really amazing work and she does such a great job of of using social media as her visual portfolio and platform. So I don't really want to give that one, but it's kind of true that if it weren't for Instagram, I wouldn't have known about her at all. So I wouldn't have spent the money to go to her exhibit. So I guess I have to add it to the list. So in total, the amount of money that I spent over the past month, and I'll include an extra week from March just because I was not here. I was in Dubai for one week. Let me do the math. Okay, okay. So the total amount 137,000 won or about 130, 135 US dollars. Actually, that's 
not as bad as I was expecting. I really thought it was going to be a lot more. You know, I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself. Even though I've been spending a lot of time on Instagram, thankfully, I guess I haven't succumbed too much to the actual purchasing. Just a tiny little pat on the shoulder for me, but that's not a small amount either. Uh, that could be reduced even more, considering I don't have a regular income at the moment. So let's hold the applause for now, but... I'm pleasantly surprised. I really thought it was going to come out to more. I, I thought it was going to be like at least 400, 500 thousand. I'm glad it wasn't more than that, but also these small little increments, they do add up over time. And I know for a fact that in the previous months, I've definitely spent more than that. So I'm really surprised that my purchases have gone down. I'm just going to leave that there. I'm very happy about that number. But the conclusion is that I don't really think I would have ever bought this much clothes. I've just been needing comfortable clothes for my classes and things like that. So it would make sense if I've been buying those kinds of things, but anything else, those are all unnecessary purchases influenced by Instagram. So this influencing thing is just kind of like a cycle. For someone who made a video about social media being a virtual reality, I'm still so caught up in it. It's not always fun, but at the same time, I do think that by controlling the amount of time that I do spend on it, consuming as well as creating, and trying to shift my focus more towards the real world, I do think that you can make some investment purchases that are necessary and are valuable and will actually have a payoff. It's just that a lot of the things I end up buying that are influenced by Instagram, as in like they're advertised to me, or that particular style is something that I want to emulate on my feed. Those things tend to not be investment quality pieces. Social media does not often influence us to make investment purchases because a lot of the trends that we see cycle very quickly. It's just much easier to buy things very quickly, buy things without really thinking about them, and also buy things on a whim without thinking about quality or longevity. But there is hope out there because I do think there are some brands and some purchases that can be made through social media influence that will stay a little longer in your wardrobe. I want to maintain a more uniform kind of style and not be so quick to try out trends just because they are affordable. And I do think the price should reflect the quality of the items. One thing in terms of wardrobe that I really do think require an investment purchase are shoes. Shoes are functional. They go on your feet. They support your walking throughout the day, which will definitely have an impact on your health. And that's not something you can say about a lot of accessory pieces. So I know I should be investing more into my shoes, but again, I have fallen to the trap. Guys, uncomfortable shoes are not fun. So the shoes that I actually got, these heeled platform Mary Janes are actually really uncomfortable. Honestly, with shoes, it's just so difficult to buy them online. But the thing in Korea is it's really, really difficult to find decent shoes that are actually my style and my size. Korean shoe sizes don't run very big. They tend to run maybe up to like 7, 7.5, 8 is like the max and then anything else will be kind of like considered special sizes. So I am at the cusp of that. Korean shoe sizing works a little differently. They measure in like centimeters for like the length of your foot. I'm a 245 or 250 depending on the type of shoe, which is quite big or considered quite big in Korea. It's hard to find comfortable shoes here. It is easy to find affordable shoes, but then again, like the clothes here, it's gonna come down to super cheaply made fast fashion or super expensive high quality. There's not a lot in between. And so being in Korea, I end up buying a lot of shoes either from foreign brands, things like Fila, 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 I don't know how to pronounce you. Nike, Adidas, Converse, brands that everyone knows. And those are generally the safest when it comes to buying shoes in Korea, but they can get very expensive because they are foreign imports. And I've had a lot of shoe failure purchases, which is why I have decided to partner with Vivea. Vivaya. Vivaya? I don't know how to pronounce it. This eco-friendly, sustainable material shoe brand that's also meant to be really comfortable for your feet. They're comfortable because of the materials that they're made of as well as their flexibility. And they have some really cute styles that are perfect for spring, including a lot of flats and heels and sandals. So if you want shoes that are comfy and wearable on a daily basis and also made of recycled materials, also look kind of semi-formal or can be dressed up or down, I would recommend these shoes. And I wanted to 
show you some spring outfits that I styled with the pieces that I got from Vivea. So the first shoes I got are these pointed lace-up oxfords and I've been wanting flat oxfords for a while. I do like that these are a little more flexible and that the material is soft so that they don't feel too stiff and they even come with a soft insole on the inside so even though they're flat shoes they won't hurt my feet as I walk. And just look how flexible they are. Look how squishy squishy squishy. Next, I've got the Aria Flats in this lovely lavender color. I love this pastel for the spring. Look how squishy it is again. These are the kind of flats that you can throw in your car, that you can use for driving, but still add a very cute pop of color to your outfit. And finally, we have the Natasha Kitten Heels. I love kitten heels. I just prefer to have a shorter heel so that I don't end up tripping myself. And I think that they're super classy and cute. And again, they come with a comfy insole so that I can walk in them all day. And the little bow detail on the front is another lovely touch. the best things I love about this brand is that they do offer free shipping and returns for orders over 99 US dollars. Honestly, even just that is really, really important when it comes to buying shoes because you can't really determine how shoes will fit you until you try them on. For me personally, I don't even know how comfortable they'll be until I walk around in them. Wearing them and walking around outside is a completely different feel from wearing them inside or even just walking around in my house, which I thought would be totally okay. And then I wear them outside and no, it's not okay. They're really uncomfortable. I just feel like being able to test a pair of shoes for one day should be something that is possible, except I know it's probably never going to happen because even wearing them for one day can damage some shoes. <clears throat> These shoes that I really hate right now. Um, did I say hate? Hmm. I'm just really glad that this brand offers a free return process. I do think that they are an investment pieces, which I highly recommend for shoes specifically. Being in a city like Seoul, it's really hard not to have shoes that I can walk around in. I would rather pay for shoes outside of Korea just because all the shoes that I buy from Korea tend to fall apart really easily. And so I will definitely be looking for more international globally shipping brands for shoes. So check them out. I will include the links in the description below as well as my very special promotion code so that you can save a little bit of <laughs> money in your next investment purchase. So thank you for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye!